Megalodon replica. It's just huge. You walk in and it's just amazing. This is our second time for doing boat building. I would have never thought about them having so many different types of fossils in that. I didn't know that people actually lived in lighthouses. So that was really cool walking through there and seeing that preserved. We came down here to well, have fun. We made boats. I've been coming here pretty much my whole life, born and raised here. And I remember doing stuff like this when I was a kid, so it's good to share it with them. It's really a great place to just enjoy the scenery, learn a few things while you're at it, and just have fun. Welcome to the Calvert Marine Museum. We're a museum of regional history and natural history of Southern Maryland. Through our three themes of Eastern biology, paleontology, and maritime history, we tell the unique story of this part of the Chesapeake Bay. So let's take some time and see how we make the magic happen. We tell stories here at the museum. Our curators are the experts and they develop uh, the storyline and they choose the animals or the artifacts. Then the exhibits team gets to work. An awful lot of what you see here, models, paintings, the casework, almost every aspect of the uh, installation is done right here. We have a excellent graphic designer, uh, illustrator, fabricator, carver, carpenter, which are actually three people and a couple of very dedicated volunteers. So a huge staff made up of uh, four or five people. We're very thankful to have a very dedicated estuarine biology team. Uh, they love the animals that they work with and they have a high stewardship value already instilled uh, in their workmanship and their daily routines. For every exhibit there is a complimentary behind the scenes area uh, so we need a lot of footprint to add in filtration spaces and storage spaces for equipment and supplies. So we use fresh water, brackish water, and salt water. We test for a wide range of water chemistry parameters to make sure that the chemistry in each of the systems is correct and accurate for the species in those tanks. Not only are we culturing seahorses, the line seahorses here, we are culturing all of the live foods that it takes in order to keep them alive. We already have several items that are already chopped up to the right sizes for the right size mouths. Scallops, whiting, and shrimp has been prepared for our, our skates and rays exhibit. Everybody loves to touch animals. I'm a volunteer here and I've been here for going on 11 years now. And I love doing it because I love the Chesapeake Bay and I want them to take that home with them. There are over 400 active volunteers who work in every facet of the museum. They feed the fish, they help interpret the programs, they go and hunt and prepare fossils in our fossil hall, they build boats, they sail boats, they do all kinds of things. The exhibits are wonderful and they're engaging, but they come to life when the staff or a trained volunteer steps up and says, let me show you how these fossils relate to modern day animals that we have here. It's so much fun seeing all the animals and seeing bubbles and squeak. The river otter is one of the most loved exhibits here at the Calvert Marine Museum. This animal is a native to our area. He was brought in from the wild where he was an orphan. Being carnivores, these animals eat just about anything that moves. Uh, we change it up every day. In so doing, their lives are enriched and hopefully they don't get bored. We do all kinds of community events, like our first Free Friday event. We usually have entertainment. In the summer, we have free boat rides, free tours of the museum lighthouse. And it's a great opportunity for families to come in and see the museum. We do the Maritime Festival, my personal favorite festival, where we celebrate Southern Maryland traditions of music, food, crafts, boat building, recreation. It's just a wonderful day. My favorite thing about the Calvert Marine Museum is the Maritime Festival. And I just think it's really cool for history, learning about the area. And I just really enjoy bringing my kids here. We come every year. I also like the boat ride. The uh, Maritime History Department is actively involved in collecting for the museum. Well, ever since the 1940s, this region has changed dramatically. It used to be you either worked on the water, you worked on the land, 
that's all people knew. That has all changed. Nowadays, it's almost incomprehensible that you went to school by boat. What we present here in the museum is trying to capture what was here before and give the people a sense, particularly the residents, of where they came from. Model making has always been a strong point of this museum, and a number of the models in our exhibits were made here at the museum. And it's a unique craft. The Maritime History Department is also responsible for our historic buildings, the Drum Point Lighthouse, because it is one of the best preserved screw power lighthouses in the Mid Atlantic region. So we have thousands of people going through this lighthouse every year. The buildings are a challenge, like any historic building is. Cove Point Lighthouse is positioned right on the Chesapeake Bay, but it is a working lighthouse. We have the Lorraine House, which is a unique exhibit on the Mid Atlantic region. The company employed up to a hundred shuckers in a good season um, who would each stand in the shucking stall, keeps your feet off of the floor so you're not muddy and wet and protects you this way so you're not getting oysters all on you. Usually we get the kids to try to pick up a bushel basket, but you get them to... Ugh. And then we got the William B. Tennyson, our Stark by boat. She was built in 1899. She was built for oyster dredging under sail. She had a lifespan when she was built probably of about 25 years. And here she is, still in, now in the 21st century, still earning a keep on the power. The Calvert Museum sticks fairly close to their mission. Uh, in my case, it's interpreting the maritime history of Southern Maryland. And I think we tell the story quite well. This stuff just doesn't just show up. Um, we acquire these objects, uh, whether we go out and collect them with a fishing boat, or whether we're out on the beach excavating fossils out of the cliffs, or whether we're in a barn and find some artifact that's there that tells the story of Southern Maryland. And so we catalog, we research it, we store it in the exhibit staff, the educators, we all work together to come up with themes, ideas, um, how to present this in the most meaningful and interesting and educational way. One of my favorite summer camps is Boat Camp, where the Patuxent Small Craft Guild helps middle school kids build a canoe in a week. And these are all volunteers who designed the boat, pre-cut the pieces, and work with the kids to put this together. I work in the Small Craft Guild. I've been with the museum almost eight years. The middle schoolers, a lot of them haven't used hammers or drills or anything like that. What we can teach them is skills they can carry with them. You get to like work with tools, you know, you get to build something of your own, and there's a lot of pride in that. The racing will be pretty fun. Building boats, getting something to take home with you, and a heck of a good time on Saturdays when you race them. So that's what our program is. We have formal programs for school groups that are either museum-based or field-based. So if you see groups of students going around, they will be doing in-depth programs about all of our themes for all ages, from kindergarten straight on up. In our field-based programs, we take kids out on our skipjack, the D of St. Mary's for sales. We also take them to the beach to hunt for fossils, and they learn all about being a paleontologist. I was six years old when I came to visit and fell in love as soon as I saw the exhibitry here, especially in the paleontology department. We have about 300 or so uh, specimens in that collection. A large amount of the cartilage is actually preserved. Wow. So it's almost unheard of to get fossilized cartilage. It has great exhibits and it's really a fun place and the fossils are wonderful. It's really, really great and it's fresh. It's very fresh. It's not like a regular kind of museum. It's an amazing staff, and you're going to see some things that you've never seen before, especially the Megalodon exhibit. No one else gets to really experience that very often, to get a full sense of how big that creature was and how spectacular it really was. I actually have the best job in the world because I get to go out along Calvert Cliffs. These are sea bluffs along the Chesapeake Bay, and as those cliffs erode naturally, the fossils that are entombed in those cliffs become exposed and we go out and we excavate those and preserve them here at the museum so that we can interpret those for people who come to the museum. So what does interpretation mean? It means that we let the fossil tell their stories. Because some of those stories are really exciting and, and clearly some people are more interested in the superlatives, in like the megalodon that's behind us. And so we do find the teeth of megalodon along Calvert Cliffs. And it's on the basis of the size of those teeth that uh, this model was made. By building up those kinds of stories, geologists and paleontologists are able to pull together the history of life on Earth. The volunteers and members of the Fossil Club also help us 
in virtually every aspect of what we do in our department. So they help us find the specimens. They'll help us excavate the fossils. They, they work in our fossil preparation lab where we bring in the specimens that we've collected from along the cliffs in the field jackets that we have used to wrap up the fossils. They remove the sediments from around the fossils and apply consolidants glues to them so that they will be preserved in perpetuity. I've been working here for six years. I work in the paleontology department. We literally scrape away dirt with dental tools and sweep it onto playing cards and it takes hours to do work like she is doing here. Going out in the field and collecting things and realizing that you're the first person to ever have seen something in millions of years, that's just so cool. A lot of museums you go in and it's a kind of a hodgepodge collection of this or that or the other, but this is really focusing on what you find here in this area. And it's all put together so well that it really takes your breath away walking through here. It is the accumulated story of hundreds of watermen, farmers, the visitors who come here add to that story. This layering of experience and knowledge and sharing, it has a kind of magic that draws people in and makes people want to be part of it. So come explore the Calvert Marine Museum. See all the things we have to offer, the stories we have to tell. We invite you to join the family.